I wanted to start this video with an anecdote that happened fairly recently. I go through phases where I alternate between watching shows and movies and gaming in my free time. I change every couple of months depending on whether I feel like doing something interactive or if I want to relax and enjoy a good story. I also watch shows with my girlfriend when our schedules match up, largely focusing on newer programs. I felt ready to work on some shows again, and so I made the switch. It was while doing so that I started realizing that the shows I've been watching, which are largely from the 90s, are far more enjoyable. I don't mean this in a figurative sense either, though I have touched on this in previous videos. Older shows are physically easier to watch. For all the acclaim modern television gets as being this new golden age or a modern renaissance, there's a lot of glaring issues with modern television I feel networks and companies need to address. Modern television is an interactive experience. To participate, one need to sit in front of the screen with the remote in their hand, finger on the volume button so they can turn the volume up to hear what the actor is saying, only to try to turn it down as quickly as possible before the next deafening musical sting or explosion hits and pisses off your upstairs neighbor. I've seen people claim that this has been done to capture the realistic dynamics of conversation, but if that was true, the other half of the conversation would be that person saying, huh? Speak up, I can't understand what you're saying. Films have been dealing with the same problem as a result of these mixes being made for Dolby Atmos, but that just makes the situation with television that much more confusing. Most people don't even have soundbars. I don't know what kind of setup they're making these partially unintelligible shows for. It's basically like the film and television industry have deemed compressors uncool in favor of free-balling the audio levels with reckless abandon. Hour-long programs are a serious commitment. I'm honestly surprised more people haven't started complaining about this. I get it, too. This was a change ushered in by streaming services due to their freedom from commercials. Without the rigid structure of network television schedules, they were free to explore a broader sense of run times, which I get it, it makes sense. People go as far as referring to some modern shows as eight-hour movies, though, which doesn't sound enjoyable. It sounds daunting. It might seem like getting more show per episode would be a good thing, but with the average viewer having so little time between work and sleep, it makes everything a very difficult decision that even dropping the runtime down to 45 minutes an episode would benefit from. I've personally gone as far as favoring shows with 22 minute episodes these days, just because you can fit so many more in your schedule with enough time to do things around the house afterwards. You used to get a lot of episodes back in the day. Some had a weekly release schedule, which gave you a 52-episode season. Others halved that, so you'd have a 24-25-episode to 25 episode season. Some gave you a 13-episode season, which entertained you for an entire meteorological season. The new norm on streaming services? Eight. That's, that's nothing. You can barely explore characters or plots with that kind of a seasonal length. One of the biggest selling points of streaming services has always been the amount of content you get access to, to which I ask this. If you're trying to sell me on quantity, then why don't your season lengths reflect this? When was the last time anyone watched a single episode of Stranger Things or Picard? That's a single, standalone episode, not as part of a watch-through. The way these shows are designed, you don't get that. You have to watch them as part of a larger thing. What do some of the classics like The Simpsons, X-Files, Twilight Zone, Star Trek The Next Generation have in common? Strong, standalone episodes. Modern shows don't have an opportunity to invest in standalone episodes as a result of investing in the serialized format, which doesn't leave any room for it. That makes recommending shows more difficult because now you have to suggest the entire show as opposed to a single episode, and that makes it a serious investment for anyone that's watching. This is an actual photo of myself trying to watch Netflix's Daredevil on my laptop a couple of years ago. I was an unwilling participant in the show more times than I wanted to be. In the wake of cameras being able to capture more in low-light settings than ever before, cinematographers have gone absolutely bonkers with how much we're actually allowed to see. I understand doing this in movies, because we're watching that in a giant dark room, but my living room is not a movie theater. Modern shows have also fallen into the trap of using excessive shaky cam and color grading to make things seem more cinematic. But that's just it. I'm not here to watch a movie, I'm here to watch a show. 
so point the camera steady and light things so I can actually see what I'm looking at. This is one that's likely going to cause a collapse in the entertainment industry. A lot of networks saw the success of companies like Netflix and Hulu and took it upon themselves to launch their own streaming services, fully expecting to capture the same amount of success. What they failed to understand was the reason why companies like Netflix and Hulu were successful, which was they were there first and they had the selection everybody was looking for. What makes things worse is they're pulling out of one of these established companies just for a chance to make it on their own, meaning the margin for error is now far more crippling than it was before. This also places unnecessary pressure on new shows. As opposed to trying to sell the subscription based on the amount of content that's available, the newest game in town has been trying to create a new breakout show. These are terrible conditions to make new shows under, especially when dealing with niche properties that don't have universal appeal. When content is stripped away from these prominent services and a whirlwind of haphazard programs are produced to fame variety, piracy regains the appeal it first lost when these services initially appeared. Nobody is going to pay for eight subscription services, especially in an economy where the luxury items are the first thing to go. So, with all this, one has to ask, is modern television doomed? No, not really. These are irritating, but it's all largely the byproduct of growing pains as a result of a medium entering a new era. I've already noticed that The Last of Us is more evenly mixed, for example. Uh, as public opinion continues to sour, these companies will take notice and fix things accordingly. Companies also need to stop wasting their time trying to compete with these established services and just return to licensing their shows and movies or entering other kinds of agreements. The amount of streaming services out there is absolutely ridiculous and absolutely unsustainable. Until next time.